So in the description of this video, you can find a link to this code, which works out the trapped knight problem. This problem was featured on a recent episode of Number File. Basically, you have a chess knight starting out at a square here in the middle of an infinitely big chess board. Um, the knight's allowed to move in uh, the usual pattern of one by two or two by one. Um, and the way the knight decides where to go is based on the number that's on each of these squares. Now I don't have the number displayed because it gets kind of crowded on the screen, but basically you make a spiral of numbers. So you start out with square one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, etc. So you just keep going around. So the higher the number, the farther away you are from the center. And the two rules are the knight always moves to the lowest number square that it can visit that it has never visited before. So for example, when it, let's zoom in a little bit, uh, when it starts out um, here at square one, its first step is to square 10 over here because all the other squares that it can get to by going two plus one or one plus two moves, um, I have a higher number. So it first visits square 10, then it jumps to square three, then it jumps to square six, then it jumps to square nine. And it's going to continue on in kind of a random seeming pattern of numbers. Uh, let's add uh, a few more steps to it. Let's get the first maybe 10 numbers in the series. So here we've got our knight jumping around uh, in this animation. And again, it can't visit uh, a previously landed on square. And so it has to keep, you know, always seeking out a new square to go to. And the ending of the story is that the knight gets trapped after 2000, I think it's 2016, 2017 moves, something like that. It depends on whether you start counting at zero or one, which I had to wrangle with this code over. So I've made this code available so that you can play around with this problem and see if you can come up with a configuration where the knight doesn't get trapped or maybe doesn't get trapped uh, quite as quickly. Maybe he can get another few moves out of it. Um, I have seen that uh, switching this two to a one, so allowing the knight to move uh, one plus three squares instead of one plus two squares, um, does allow him to get uh, a little bit more than 3,000 uh, uh, jumps, which is a nice improvement, but he still gets trapped after a while. I've also seen that if you keep the ratio of these two steps the same, so if you make this a two and a four instead of a one and a two, you actually get pretty much the same pattern, and he actually gets trapped in the same number of moves as for the one and the two. Now the reason for that is because with both of these being multiples of two, he's going to skip every other square. So for example, he starts out here in square one, and it's not possible for him to get to any squares on this row, or on this row, or on this row, because those would require an odd number of steps, and you can't get an odd number out of twos and fours. Same thing going left and right. You can't get to this column, this column, or this column. You can't get to the odd numbered columns. And so basically you're taking away half the board. And so you're basically giving it the same problem. So he's going to follow the same pattern that he followed with the one and the two. So you don't, so you only need to consider uh, movements where they don't have any common factors. So having like one and three is a good one. Having one and four is a good one. Having two and three would be an interesting one. I haven't tried that one yet. Uh, but you can see that you'll end up with a different sequence of numbers here and you have a different uh, trajectory that you're tracing out here on the board. So like I said, you can take this code and uh, play around with it, see what you can get out of it. I'm going to try to automate this process to where I get the code to tweak these numbers and I'm gonna see if we can find a pattern uh, between the ratio of these two numbers and the number of moves the knight can take before he gets stuck. And so the way this code works is pretty straightforward. You start out with the knight's starting point. So you give the X and Y coordinates of where you want the knight to begin. You set the knight's movement pattern. Uh, so how many squares can it move uh, left and right or up and down with each movement? And then after that, we create the chessboard. We're always going to err on the side of adding more squares than necessary just so that the knight definitely has uh, enough room to move around uh, on the perimeter. Then here we create the knight. The knight is a red sphere that's going to be tracing out the red pattern over here. And we're keeping track of the squares the knight has visited with this list visited. So we start out with the square that has his starting point. 
And then here we have the loop that we're going to go around. So here we're adding uh, some extra squares just in case, uh, just in case we need them. Um, you always want to set a maximum number of iterations just so that the code doesn't run forever. Um, I've set it to be ridiculously large uh, so that I can set this thing to run overnight and uh, it won't. Um, destroy my computer. Uh, then we begin the loop. We're going to keep track of whether we're done with a logical variable called done, and we're going to run as long as we are not done. And I've put parentheses around this. I know that's technically not necessary, uh, but it's just always, you know, a little bit cleaner, I feel like, to to, to group your things with parentheses. Um, here we've got a ridiculously high rate so that uh, we still have it animated, um, but it's moving as fast as it possibly can. And here's where we check which squares can be visited. Basically, uh, with each move, the knight can, in principle, go to a maximum of eight squares. It can move in the x direction by d1, and in the y direction by d2, or it can move in the x direction by d2, and in the y direction by d1. And then the rest of these lines just change the pluses and minuses to change the direction. Now remember the knight can only go to squares that he has not visited before. So here's where we check for previous visited. Previous visited? Previous visits. Uh, so here we have uh, our, our loop over the number of squares that I had visited so far, and we're going to check for whether any of those squares is in the current list that it's trying to visit. If so, we're going to remove that square from the list. So this is part of what makes the code go slower at uh, uh, larger and larger boards as we go on with the sequence, is that this, this check is taking longer each time. Uh, and then basically here is where we check for whether we're trapped. Uh, so if if we've eliminated all the possible squares that the knight can visit, then the, the knight cannot visit anymore, and the knight becomes trapped, and we say done equals true. Otherwise, we go to the square with the minimum uh, number label on it. So this is where we're just checking for which number uh, each of the squares has, and we go to the square that has the lowest number label. Um, after that, we have a couple of functions to define how we're going to add squares and how we look up squares. That's pretty straightforward, so I won't... Uh, go over that uh, in any real detail. That's pretty straightforward to understand. So yeah, you can play around with this and uh, try to figure out a pattern that you like or that's interesting. Um, this is interesting how it's, uh, you know, kind of got these wings coming off the back here. That's pretty neat. So anyway, hope you have fun with this. I look forward to sharing some results with you later.